Good morning, everyone. It is week two, day two of Web Fundamentals. We're going to go over some objects this morning. We are going to talk about objects still. We had been talking about objects since your lecture with Narciso on Friday morning. And we're going to continue that because we're going to just be working with objects for the whole time we'll be working on JavaScript. So it's key to know uh, objects and object notation in JavaScript. So that's what we're going to be doing this morning. We're going to be doing um, some um, fun Pokemon related object stuff. So let's take a look at what we have. All right. So we know what an object is, right? We know that an object, uh, objects. Who can tell me how to write an object, a JavaScript object? We need, let's start with the variable var obj. And let's, where do we go from here? Equals. Okay. And then from there, it kind of depends on what the object is. Like okay. if it's an array, it's going to be one set of brackets, things like that. All right, but what's the what's the essential beginning steps of writing an object? Not just what's inside, but like the shell, the outside. We know an object is different than an array, uh, right? But we know an array starts with curly brackets. What's an what's an object start with? We see it right here. An object we know is going to end and close with those curly brackets. So curly brackets, this is the opening and closing of an object, right? We know the curly brackets are a distinct feature of the object. What else here? We see an ID. Oh, oops. ID. Colon one. So this is the key value pair. All right. So ID is the key. This is the key. And then this is the value. Value is going to be one. So um, if I Just like in an array, if I ask for the index value, uh, the index number of an array, it's going to return the value. So if I uh, unlock here with the key, if I ask for the ID, I'm going to get the value of the ID. Okay. If I ask for the key, I'm going to get the value of the key, which is one. All right. So everything is now in key value pairs, not sorted by index in a sorted order, it's, it's sorted by key value pairs. That's how an object works. So how can we gain access to those key value pairs? In an array, we had to say the array name and then um, brackets to say, for example, if I um, you know, wanted the index one of this array that we see here, poison and grass. So then I would say, the name of this array at index zero, right? That would return poison. The way that we're gonna return the values of, a, of an object is by calling the key to return the value, okay? So we're gonna be learning how to do that today. We're gonna to be practicing how to do that today. Um, well, let's, let's do a little practice before we get started. How do we uh, return the value of that ID for monster. So how do I get the notation down so that I can return the value of that ID? Anyone? Would we say this dot ID? Well, uh, if we are writing inside the object, yes. If we are writing within the object, yes. Okay, what if I'm writing outside of the object? I'm just going to say monster dot. So this dot here 
is what's going to say inside this monster, I want to get this key. So if I say monster.id, this will return the value that the ID has stored for it. So how would I get a uh, name? How would I get name? You would just replace ID with name. So like monster.name. Exactly. So if I wanted bubble store, I'd say monster dot name. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some more examples. Oh, but before we do that, one more look at let's look at this one. This one has a value which is an array. This one has a value which is an array, right? Let's look at this one. Think about it. Uh, we're gonna answer this one in just a moment. How can we? How can we access this value of, uh, for example, grass? How can we just select grass out of the types? How can we do that? Okay, we'll think about it. We'll return to it in a second. But let's look, well, yeah, we have the answer here, but we'll, we'll return to it in a second. Let's look at this object here. This object, this is, this is an array of objects. So this is an array var Pokemon equals, and then we have that array because it's a curly, uh, sorry, square bracket here. And then we have the curly brackets. So these, this is an array of objects. So what array position is this highlight? What array position is this highlight? Is it zero? Zero, right? Because it's still the first value in the array. The items in the array are separated by commas, as you can see here. Each line has a comma at the end. So this is a normal array. Uh, but now each value is an object. Each value is an object. We know it's an object because it starts with the curly bracket and it ends with the curly bracket. Now in this object, we have a key value pair with a value being a number one being a string and this one being, and this one has a, an array. So we have an array with uh, an object with an array that has an array as well as one of its key value pairs. Okay, so now that we've had some thought, let's take a look. How could we access, using the monster variable above, how could we access the second type? So when we want to access, for example, this grass here, we will have to say monster dot types. That will give us access to this array. But we want a specific value in this array. We want just the second type. And we know ordering of an array is zero and then one, right? So this is going to be the second one. So we need to say monster.types. And since we know this is going to be an array value, we're going to say at index one. Okay. So this is how we can get a value, a key value pair, a specific value within an array of a key value pair. Okay, monster.types at index one would return this grass value. So we're going to be working with accessing um, different values in this Pokemon array. Uh, Josh, I have a quick question. Yes. Um, since it's like a key value pair, if you did monster.types and omitted like the index of the array, would it give you both of them or would it just give you undefined? Good question. Let's check it out. Let's take a look. Yes, it would give you both of them, but let's see this in a visual so that we can see that. Okay, give me a second. Let me just copy this over. Okay. All right, so. Okay, so script.js. 
you right click this three dots and you and you click um close all it'll close all of them so you can just restart refresh here you are all right so we wanted to see what would happen if for example we console logged well let's just see what this does first right so let's see this okay And so actually not here. All right. Okay. Node script dot js. And so right now it's just logged grass, right? Because we have that second type at index one. So monster.types at index one. Now I'm gonna erase that um, index one value. And if I run it, there we get it, the whole entire array. So if you don't specify the index specific index value, it'll return the entire array. Did you see that Josh? Yep, thank you. Okay. And then what's the point of the ID if it doesn't do anything? The ID does do something. You know, did I don't know. Uh, did you ever watch Pokemon growing up? No. <laughs> okay. Well, each each Pokemon has its own unique ID number in the list of numbers. So there's there was originally 150 to begin with, and there was uh each one had a number on the list. So this is just the first number and we can access the, the monster. We want them to have an ID. So like, let's say we create uh, a website like a Facebook type of website where people can log in, post stuff. They're gonna have an ID. We're gonna give them an ID even if they don't know what their own ID is. They create a <laughs> username, they create a, ver they create a password, they put their info, but then we have an ID for each um user that's created at least for us as the admins or the, the builders of the website we need to know uh you know have a unique id for each user so that's kind of like what's going on here we have different pokemon on a list all right you can see here it skips some of them it goes from the first one to the fifth to the ninth to the twelfth there's just a random array of uh pokemon in in order but not like se sequential order so it goes from one five nine so it's just a different Pokemon. The IDs are there to keep track of what number they are on the list of Pokemon created. So that's what we're seeing here. And usually all of our objects, when we're creating objects in, in um, like what I just said, programming, what value is going to be like user values, they're all going to usually have an ID. Okay? It would be rare to not have an ID for um, some of the users on your list or accounts on your um, page. Okay, so here we have the array and it has different objects. So we're gonna work with this. Let's look at if someone wanted to console log the names of the Pokemon who have an ID greater than 99. So if we have an ID greater than 99, we need to create a for loop, right? Because we're gonna loop. We're gonna console log the names of the Pokemon. We're not gonna console log them individually. We want the system, the computer to do it for us. So. We're going to create a for loop, start at zero, go through the Pokemon length, right? Because that is the length of the array. And then if Pokemon at, I, at eyes.id. So that's going to ask if that Pokemon's ID, all right? That's how you go into that Pokemon arrays object value of ID. And then you ask if it's greater than 99. If it is greater than 99, then you want to console log those Pokemons. So that's how, this is an example of how you would console log all the names of the Pokemon who have an ID greater than 99. So this is a uh, an example, a starting point for the challenges that we're going to tackle today. Okay, so we have four challenges and a bonus challenge. Let me go ahead and read these. The console, first one is console log the Pokemon whose objects 
Pokemon objects whose ID is evenly divisible by three. All right. So give me all the Pokemon here whose ID is evenly divisible by three. Okay. I don't want you to do this yourself manually. I want you to be able to um, create some for a for loop that will do that. Okay. A for loop that will console log all the Pokemon whose objects is evenly divisible by three. Then you would need to, with your group, uh, console log the Pokemon objects that have more than one type for all the Pokemon that have more than one type, right? Because there's an array of types. Some of them have just a type of fire or water. We want the one that's, uh, all the Pokemon that have more than one type. So this one has a type of bug and flying. This one has a type of normal and flying. This one has types of water and poison. So all the ones that have more than one type, that's what we want to console log. All right, that's step two. Number three, we want to console log the names of the Pokemon whose only type is poison. Okay, there's some Pokemon in here who have the type water and poison. Look at this one here. Tentacool has water and poison as their type. We don't want that one. We want only the Pokemon whose only type is poison. So, for example, look at these two here, Ekans and Arbok. They have their only types available as poison. Okay. So that's number three. And number four, console log the first type of the all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So there are some Pokemon who have the type flying. So for example, um, if we read here, uh, let's see. Is there one that's just a flying type? Pidgey. That's a normal flying, but it has two types. Um, I think all of the flying types have two types, actually, now that I look at it. So uh, we still want to use the same logic. First type, console log, the first type of all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So for all the Pokemon who have a second type of flying, all right, so let's say this one here, Pidgey, who is normal and flying. We want to console log the first type of all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So the first type of Pidgey is normal. The second type is flying. So for all the Pokemon whose second type is flying, we're going to console log their first type. So we should see normal. Uh, what's the next one? Um, electric. And then fire. Because all of these have their second type as flying, I want to see their first types printed. So that would be, like I just said, um, bug, normal, um, ice, electric, fire. Okay. And lastly, the bonus challenge. Console log the reverse of the names of the Pokemon whose only type is poison. So let's look at the ones that have their only type of poison, Ekans and Arbok. We want you to console log the reverse of the names. So that means the name, console log it in reverse from right to left. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions about what we're doing? or any of the challenges. Okay, the goal is to get all four. If you get the bonus challenge, more power to you. So let's go ahead and uh, break out into groups. Okay, recording started. All right, who would like to share uh, their solution for the first challenge? Console log the Pokemon objects whose ID is evenly divisible by three. So who'd like to share that one first? Uh, we, we can do that one. Okay, thank you. Let me share my screen. Okay, um, so we have our array here. Uh, we pretty much just kept the for loop the same and our if statement was Pokemon at index uh, ID pulls right here if it is modulo three 
equals zero. So if it is divisible by three, then we console.log that Pokemon index. Nicely done. Awesome. Oh, and just just so you know, FYI, whenever you uh, copy an array like this, it, as long as you don't comment it out, it should be available to every for loop you write on your page. So you didn't have to write it like twice. every single time. Yeah, you can only okay. write. Yeah, you can write it once and all of your for loops should be able to access it as long as you don't comment it out. OK, cool. OK, that's all right. So any questions about how to do that one? I think that one's pretty simple, right? You use a modulo symbol. You guys pass the programming basic test. So you proved your knowledge, right? The modulo symbol is just asking divisible by three with the remainder of zero. So that's how we got that one. OK, nice job. All right, so let's share uh, the next result. Who would like to share for number two? Actually, can, I, can we share for this? Because I think we had a pretty cool check involved. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then just challenge two if you want to uncomment that. Do you want to explain it or do you want me to explain it? Uh, I can. Okay. So, oh, this should be commented. Yeah, so var i is zero, i is less than Pokemon dot length i plus plus, and then if Pokemon i dot types dot length, is because it's wanting the more than one type over here. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's greater than one. Console log Pokemon i. So if you run that, it should give us everyone that's more than two. And then we checked it by um, adding Richard and Kai just to see if it gives us more than two. Nice. Because all these have two on them. Just want to make sure that if there was any more than two, it would still count them. Awesome. Yeah, we just threw like a little last check in there just to make sure. I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. Point out. Yeah. Yeah. So all the Pokemon whose types dot length is greater than one, we console that, uh, that Pokemon at I. Right. Okay, nice job, guys. What's uh, uh, super effective against Richard? <laughs> <laughs> mm, water type. <laughs> money. Well, does, he, does he not yeah. shower? <laughs> if, uh, <laughs> bribing uh, money works. <laughs> Fire, are you flammable, Richard? Um, I am. I'm also inflammable, which <laughs> act, flammable and inflammable have the same definition. Oh. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, we need to change that. Inflammable. Yeah, I don't know who decided that, but <laughs> someone messed up. We were, we were taking him off the committee. All right. <laughs> Next question. Number three. Console log the names of the Pokemon whose only type is poison. Who would like to present? Easy, I can show that. Okay. So this line just... If the line if the length equals one, that leaves only one option. So if that type is zero, I mean if the zero is poison, then okay. All right. Tell me again what this sign does. That's just an and. So it's saying if the length equals one and the type of that length is poison. Right. So if one of those conditions isn't true, then it will not. Uh, yes. Ring is true. Just so we know. Okay. So this one's saying we're checking the length if it's equal to one. And it has to also meet if Pokemon at I uh, dot types at zero is equal to poison. So we're checking poison as well. All right. So that's how we get that. It has to be a uh, length of one and has have to have a type of poison. Nicely done. Any questions about how to do this one? Pretty straightforward, right? All right, so the last one we have is number four. The first type of all the Pokemon whose second type is flying. So let's, let's see who uh, completed this one. Who'd like to volunteer? I know I've seen- um, I guess we can go. Thank you. 
Uh, well, I didn't realize your thing talks with you. Your... Oh, yeah, he's cute, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I just did, um, or we did uh, Pokemon of Ida types um, one to check the second, um, or index one, check the array to check if it's flying. Uh -huh. Console a lot Pokemon of I, uh types of the, so it would write out the first type. Got it. Okay. So we just, we say we're saying if Pokemon at types one, so that's going to be their second type is equal to flying, then console log Pokemon at I dot types at zero. That's going to be their first type. But that's exactly what we need. We got that list. Bug, normal, ice, electric, fire. And um, yeah, I guess I'm looking at this. I'm, I'm glad we don't have any real life animals that have these powers and also can fly. All right. I mean, you well, stink. You say that, but like stingrays can shock people. That's like an electric type. And, and butterfree is just a butterfly. It's a bug you and know, fly. And some people are allergic to pollen, so like butterflies. Yeah, but I, I, I just meant the fire, electric, and ice type. The, the poisons, yes, they're they're always there. Like mosquitoes, I heard are the most dangerous animal in the world. So that is definitely. Uh, I'm not yeah, really sure. They, 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 they probably have the most disease. lives. Yeah, they, they have malaria and stuff. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, that, that we're getting off to another topic. This is uh all right. Who has the bonus challenge now? Console log the reverse of the names of the Pokemon whose only type is poison. Um, Viviana and I got really close. Okay. Um, I'm gonna share my screen just to show okay. what we got. Did anyone get it though? Did anyone complete this one? All right, let's see your let's see your result, Eric. So we got it to where we copied the, the one where we got the poisons, uh -huh. so the two ones, um, and then we did another for loop to try to manipulate the back end. So we we tried um, right here, Pokemon dot types dot length, but it didn't. Or Pokemon dot name dot link and it didn't work. Um, but we ended up just doing that and then we ran it and we all we got like snake cobra. We we didn't know how to concatenate it. Ah, you're so you're that well, this is pretty good. <laughs> this is pretty good without using any inbuilt functions. Okay. But we can say Pokemon. What if we try uh Pokemon at I dot type uh sorry pokemon at eyes dot name dot length pokemon at eyes dot name dot length what if we did that dot name dot length no no not there not there but like oh. here in inside the for loop as a place to start okay 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 pokemon name Maybe, yeah. I want to see. I wonder if this works. Well, I is now like, so we had to change the variable. So yeah. we changed it to J. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's good. Cool. That's good. Undefined snake, undefined cobra. Oh, so we have to say name.length minus one to get that first. Okay. Okay. So let's try it again. Okay. All right. Um, and so now we're we're pretty close. I'll leave you here to try <laughs> and um get that final result. But we have that that last piece of the puzzle that you were looking for, right? That mm -hmm. okay. That if I give it to you it'll be much more satisfying for you to figure it out on yourself. So, all right, guys, it's looking great. I am uh, loving how well you guys are working with objects. Now we need to pivot to focusing on the test, right? So let's take a break and get focused on the test. So let me set a timer. Uh, here we are. 
And here's the uh, Ekans and Cobra there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. Uh, okay, 10 minutes, and then let's get started uh, with our test, test review.